Today we're gonna to look at a nice problem which was on an entrance exam in 1976 to a Japanese university. Our goal is to minimize the function f of x which equals the sum as n goes from one to 11 of n minus x times two n minus x. And we'll make use of the following well-known formulas. The first one is the sum of the first n positive integers. So in other words, one plus two plus three ending at capital N. That gives us n times n plus one over two. And then we've also got the sum of the first n squares, which gives us n times n plus one times two n plus one over six. I have a video where I come up with a somewhat closed formula for this sort of power sum, but the closed formula is not so nice in the end. But I think it's still a pretty interesting video. Okay, so let's start by multiplying out what's happening within this summation so that we can apply these formulas. So let's see, we'll get f of x equals the sum as n goes from one to 11 of two times n squared minus three x n. So the three x n comes from minus x times two n and minus x times n. And then finally plus x squared. So again, that's just multiplying out this binomial. Now we'll split this sum into three pieces. So this is gonna be twice the sum is n goes from one to 11 of n squared. We're writing it like that so that we can directly use the second formula, minus three times x, and then the sum as n goes from one to 11 of n, and then plus the sum as n goes from one to 11 of x squared. Great. Now, like I said, we can apply these formulas over here. So this is gonna give us two times 11 times 12 times 23 over six. So this two comes from this two that's out front. The rest of it comes from our closed form down here. And then we'll have minus three X times 11 times 12 over two for that middle term. And for this last term, we're really just adding X squared to itself 11 times which gives us exactly 11x squared. Now we're gonna do a couple of things at once. We're gonna notice that everything has a multiple of 11 in it, so we can factor an 11 out. And then we can also cancel these fractions down to something simpler. So this six will cancel this 12 down to a two. And then this two will cancel this 12 down to a six. So after factoring the 11 out, that'll leave us with x squared minus 18x. So we have three times six, and then plus two times two times 23, which is 92. Okay, so now we wanna find the maximum, or I should say the minimum value of this quadratic polynomial but this is uh, obviously an upward facing parabola because the coefficient of x squared is positive. So if we can find the vertex, then we're done. And we can find the vertex a number of different ways. We could use like the formula for the vertex. So it would be like negative b over 2a, so that would be 18 over two or nine based off of the quadratic formula. We could complete the square and get the same thing, or we could do some calculus. So let's maybe do some calculus and find out the place where the derivative is zero, so the slope of the tangent is zero, or the tangent line is horizontal. So here we get f prime of x is equal to 11 times 2x minus 18. I left that 11 out just for simplicity. So that means that f prime of x equals zero, when x equals nine, 18 divided by two is nine from solving this thing over here. Okay, then our minimum will occur, well, at this point. So that means our minimum will be f evaluated at nine. And that's just a matter of plugging nine into maybe this version of our function right here and simplifying. I won't do all of those details, but what we get is the number 121 
which I think is pretty interesting because that's equal to 11 squared. And 11 is kind of the upward bound of this sum. So seeing that, let's see if we can generalize this a little bit so that we end at maybe some arbitrary number. So like I said, now we're gonna look at an altered version of this problem where we end at n instead of 11 and see if we get the same sort of structure. So let's start with the same step. We'll multiply this out. This will give us the sum as n goes from one to capital N of, we have the same kind of thing here. We'll have two N squared and then minus three X times the sum as N goes from one to capital N of N. And then finally plus X squared times the sum as N goes from one to capital N of the number one. So this is essentially a couple of steps in a row that we did before. Okay, now we can apply our closed sum formula over here. Let's recall that this two is coming out. So we'll have two times n times n plus one times two n plus one all over six. And then minus three x times n times n plus one over two. And then finally plus n times x squared. Okay, so that's starting to look good. Now let's note that we can maybe cancel this six with this two down to a three in the denominator. And then we can also factor a capital N out of the whole thing. Okay, so that's gonna tell us that f of x has the following form. We'll factor that capital N out and then we have x squared minus 3n plus 3 over 2 times x. So that would be from this term right here. And then plus n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 over 3. Okay, so that's where we are now. So notice that our maximum, or sorry, our minimum will also occur where the derivative equals zero. The derivative is pretty easy to calculate. That'll be uh, capital N times two X minus three N plus three over two, which means X will be equal to three N plus three over four. Now notice when N was equal to 11, that numerator was 33 plus three, which is 36 over four, which is nine. So that's what gave us the solution in that case. But in this current setup, we may not have the same structure. So let's plug this in. So F of three N plus three over four. So that's gonna give us N times three N plus three squared over 16. So that's this first term and then minus 3n plus 3 squared over 8. That'll be this second term. And then finally, plus n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 over 3. That's that third term. So that's our minimum value. Okay, let's maybe bring that to the top and see if we can simplify it. And maybe does it simplify to something nice like we had before? or does it not? Or can we classify the n values where it does simplify to something nice? So I've done a tad bit of simplification, but we just determined that the minimum value of our altered version is the following kind of object. Now let's see if this simplifies any more. Notice that we can factor an n plus one out of every term here. That'll give us n times n plus one. And then here we'll have nine times n plus one over 16 minus nine times n plus one over eight. Okay, well, nine times n plus one over 16 minus nine times n plus one over eight. Well, we can actually simplify that by writing this as 18 times n plus one over 16. Let's leave it like that for now. And then we'll have plus uh, two n plus one over three. Okay, so that gives us n times n plus one times, let's see, two n plus one over three minus, let's see, this will be nine 
times n plus 1, so 9n plus 9 over 16, when all of that simplification occurs. And now let's simplify this just a tad more by finding common denominators here. We can multiply the numerator and the denominator here by 16, and that'll give us something like 32n plus 16 over 48. And then we can do the same thing over here, multiply by 3, that gives us 27n plus 27 over 48. Okay, so what happens when we combine those? So we get n times n plus 1, and then here we'll have 32n minus 27n, that will be 5n. 16 minus 27, so let's see, that'll be 11, so minus 11 all over 48. So we're left with something like that. So that's not really that pretty, but notice that if we set n equal to 11, we do recover what we had before. So this gives us 11 times 12 times, that'll be 55 minus 11, so 44 over 48, but that's going to be 4 times 12. Notice that this 4 will cancel this 44 down to 11. This 12 will cancel that 12, and we'll end up with 11 squared. Now, maybe my open question to you, are there any other values of capital N that make this collapse to something nice? And that's a good place to stop. Music